There is an ancient prophetic text, specifically from the book of Daniel, that describes in the last days knowledge will increase and men will run to and fro over the face of the earth. Knowledge of God is supposed to increase mm. to all people. The fact that it's been concealed until this moment in history is indisputable because up until the advent of the computer, the most you could do would be to count letters and with your finger in your hand and you know wet, wet your finger and turn the page. Um, with the advent of the computer, it suddenly made that which was not seeable, um, seeable. In the Torah codes, we are dealing with some reality inside the book of Torah. We cannot pretend that we have a real full grasp of it. Just but using the means at our disposal, we see that it is real. It manifests time and again in various ways. Certainly there are numbers of people who dismiss the Torah codes by saying that you can find, you know, a code in any large body of letters, take war and peace and run some tables and you'll you'll get some codes revealed. And and that may be true. What I've never heard happening in war and peace is a physical manifestation that then reinforces the code. And you have in the case of the Mumbai massacres, the Torah code which appears in a specific verse saying Mumbai terrorists massacre, the key words, that verse is exactly where the bullets of the terrorists went through the Torah in Chabad house in Mumbai. I don't think they found a copy of War and Peace with a bullet hole there that, that had the same code uh, revealed in that chapter. Um, and, and I've had the same experience of, of, of a Torah code that, that had my name, my rank in the Israeli army, my date of birth, my father's name, and it appeared in a verse uh, in the Torah that was exactly the verse that a group of rabbis chose to be inscribed in a brass plaque under a picture of me. There is something very unusual in the Torah text, something that's unexpected to have happened by chance, and it's there by design. When we read the, uh, the Bible in English, uh, particularly the, the Old Testament and the Torah, the first five books, we are reading uh, a condensed English version from the Hebrew. The commentaries on the Hebrew of the Torah in English done for the Jewish community contain 35 times as many words as you see in English. A recent table on the Twin Tower attack with September 11th, massacre, twins, towers, and the most interesting feature is that all the codes came up over the plain text in the book of Exodus and fell from the people this day about 3,000 men. Interestingly, the Torah knew how many would die before the U.S. could tally the dead. Are you trying to shoehorn Torah codes over the plain text so that, let's say, key words in the code will also appear in the plain text. There was an experiment that was done. In fact, the experiment was published in 2004. And the probability of something like this happening by chance was extremely, extremely small. Recent tables include Japan, earthquake, including the words atomic meltdown. This table had a probability factor of only 2.5 in 1 million. Gaddafi, in the table it relates, his presidency is fragile, will be killed. The correct Hebrew calendar year of 5772. It also states a scoundrel. Let it be said that there's, um, there are mysteries there that are just beyond human doing. You know, we can understand once they're showed to us, but to have done it? Yeah, hold, hold it you know, three, sure. four thousand years ago? I mean, yeah. no, no, no. no. Uh, this, is, this is magnificent stuff. A very recent table, which we asked Professor Harlick to do on the Nephilim, states, Nephilim, sons of God, end of days. What does this mean? 
Are modern Nephilim walking the earth in the end of days? What was the ephod? What, what was the ephod that was used thousands of years ago? Tell us about that. Yeah, the ephod was really, it was, it looked like an apron for the high priest. An apron? Right? Yeah, it was like an apron, right? And this was connected to a breastplate. Now this breastplate was folded and inside this, like a pocket inside, uh -huh. was a parchment with God's name. Because on this breastplate, which was joined to the ephod, there were 12 stones, and the names of the 12 tribes were engraved on it. And then, when a question was asked by the high priest, then the letters of the tribes, I mean those letters which have the answer, came out. Hmm. So the, the high priest could find out through the letters which were shining, lightning, the answer to the question. We know that the ephod was lost to us thousands of years ago. Is it possible to, that maybe someday um, we'll find the ephod? Maybe, like, uh, like other parts of the temples. We know, we don't know something in the Vatican, we don't know, but uh, <laughs> we have to get them back. They are hidden somewhere, no doubt. Do you think that the Torah codes may be a type of a modern day ephod? What, uh, what can you tell us? Now, this was an amazing, amazing thing that, thing that we, we found. found when we put the Hebrew word called Torah, which is the Israeli Torah code, then we put the word effort, it came there three times. It came exactly on the same line with the word called Torah, clearly showing connection between the Torah code and the effort. And then what we have also the dates, interesting, when it started coming to the world, I mean, the idea of, of the codes, they knew about it. It was really 19, 1976. Then, interestingly, it came also this year, and pin light came there, unbelievable. Pin light came there, minimal in the old Torah, unbelievable. Clearly showing it's amazing. that Finland is supposed to be very much involved in it and bring to the world also, because mm -hmm. Amazingly, it came every very small amount of letter in between, pin lights, so it, it was a minimal. So it all together, you know, this table shows that Torah codes are connected to the ephod, as it appears so many times with the same story, and also it appeared with the word Urim Tumim, with the lights and completeness. I mean, Urim Tumim, it says this was the parchment with the names of God which was called Urim Tumim. Hmm. So it, this also came in the table there, hmm. which is exactly the idea of the, the, the ifa. Torah code, or the yeah. Ifad and the, the Torah, Torah code, code. Yeah. which showing through letters, right, the answer, the meaning of things, you see. The book of Esther is not part of the Torah, but you discovered something fascinating, extremely interesting in the book of Esther. Explain that to us. This was found by Rabbi Weissmandel. Rabbi Weissmandel, in fact, he was the first one who wrote... He would count on the, on the three by five yeah. cards. Now, what he did is amazing. This is really what you cannot understand without computer. A man could do it. He counted the number of letters of the scroll of Esther. The number of letters are 12,111. One, two, one, one, one. This is an, he counted it. Without uh, computer, without the content. Then he decided to look in the Torah for the Hebrew words, Megillat, Megillat is a scroll in Hebrew, and it came out in the Torah every 12,111 letters. It means you had the word Esther, letter after letter, and then you have the word Megillat, scroll, appearing every 12,000. 111 letters in between. Mm. Amazing. So it means the number of letters of the scroll of Esther is a skip of its appearance in the Torah.